Well, the, uh, the eagle-eyed among you, and so far there's been one that I know of, but the eagle-eyed among you will notice that the old motto is still up there. That's not because it's going to remain there, it's because the new motto's not come. Uh, we're waiting for the banner. The new motto's here, but the banner as it's uh, listed on. So if you weren't here last week, I went through the book of, uh, uh, not through the book of Acts, I went through Acts 18, or part of it, to come to the new uh, GBC motto of 2018, which is in uh, Acts 18, verses 9 and 10, which is, don't be afraid, speak out, don't be silent, for I am with you. There's other bits, but we'll come to that later. So when the new banner comes, it'll all come down, it'll go up. But quite frankly, if I'm up front with you, it's a waste of time getting the ladder out from there and there, running around there, pulling that down and then having to do it again the second time around when the new banner arrives. But it's on its way. Um, our normal banner man um, has actually uh, had an operation prior to Christmas and is just being a bit delayed, that's all it is. So, so don't be afraid, speak out. Don't be silent for I am with you. And I said, as I will be going through this, when I am speaking, I'm not speaking next Sunday. We have uh, Sarah Wiggins from Tear Fund coming to speak to us next Sunday. So um, that will be uh, well worth coming and listening to because I don't think it's been a long time since we've had anybody come and speak to us about the work at Tear Fund. So I won't be speaking next Sunday, but we're gonna go through bits of what does this mean for us, yeah? Going to take sections in it. So let's start today with don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. So I want you to reflect just for a moment on don't be afraid. In various formats, don't be afraid is somewhere in the Bible about 80 plus times. And the vast majority of the time, it is a command. And I keep saying this quite often. We, we, and you know, I talk to myself as much as anybody else, but we, we have this don't be afraid as a there, 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 don't be afraid. But if you look in the NLT, there's an exclamation mark at the end. Now, I don't know when you're caring and cuddling someone and you're saying to them, don't worry, don't be afraid. You don't do it with an exclamation mark at the end, do you? You, you tend to be, oh, it's okay. Look, don't, don't worry, don't be afraid. Don't worry. Sorry, Beatrice, you're the closest. <laughs> don't worry, it's okay, yeah? You don't tend to go, don't be afraid, yeah? Try it sometime, it might work. So the Lord clearly wants to command us, don't be afraid. And the reason being, he's with us. But I want us to look at, and this is sort of a, how can I put this? This is going to be all the sort of pastoral work en masse. Oh, whoopity do was that, John? <laughs> yeah, don't say anything at the back. Just take a moment and think to yourself, well, if that's a command, surely it should be really easy, shouldn't it? Don't be afraid. All right, God, no problem. Yeah? Sorry. Did, hello? It's okay, good. That's all right. Hello? Yeah, that's easy enough. Don't be afraid. No problem. I've got that, Lord. Thank you. Yeah? It's like the, I've got the do not kill command. That's easy enough. Or I've easily got that one. Worship the Lord your God and him only. Got that one. No problem. Oh, no, we haven't. We've all got our idols, haven't we? So I want you to take for a moment, and this is a real question for all of us, what makes us afraid? It's a real question. So it's generic enough that you can make up anything you want for other people. They're afraid of this, not me. It's all right. You're safe for now. You're safe for now. Oh, look, there the hands go. That's all right then. Great. Thanks very much. The unknown. The unknown? 
Failure. Failure. Economic instability. Economic instability. Upsetting someone. Upsetting someone. Making wrong decisions. Making wrong decisions. Who, who else? Oh, I don't know. Oh! <laughs> Shame. Shame. Something we can't control. Something we can't control, cool. So I keep repeating, just make sure it goes on the camera. The future. The future. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, sorry, didn't mean to. Was it here, wasn't it? Uh, certain world leaders naming no names. Okay. Somebody try and trump that one. Right. <laughs> Thank you, I'm here next week. <clears throat> Sorry, I... sorry. Disappointments. Disappointments, afraid of disappointments, okay. Anybody else? Operations in the aftermath. Operations in the aftermath, yeah. Come on, there's more, dig deeper. Aeroplanes, Pastor. Aeroplanes, okay. All right, I'll come. Thanks, dear. Change. Change, yes. That's a big one. Oh, thanks, Mary. Maybe you're going to lose your job. Afraid of losing your job, yeah. Yeah, that's another biggie. Death. Death, afraid of death, yeah. Saw another hand up. Is it oh, Caleb wants a second go. Lack of self-confidence and, dare I say it, faith. Cool, thank you. Anything else? Disaster. Disaster. Spiders. Oh, there'd be a lot of people with you in that one. You wouldn't spend too long in here. If you look up high enough, you'll see enough cobwebs in this place. My favourite one is when I walk into my office and literally straight into a massive cobweb that they built overnight. Like, really? Do you know there's so much more? And so therefore then, I now want you to take a few moments for yourself, talking to God and being honest what actually is my fear? What is it I really am truly scared with? And just, I genuinely are, we're going to take silence in this for a good minute or so. So just listen. What is really my deepest fear? Okay. Uncomfortable? So just hold that for now. Park it to one side. Now, unless I'm uh, 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 slightly mistaken, I, I don't think actually anybody here said man or person. There might have been sort of a world le leaders, <coughs> sorry. But nobody actually specifically said people. Now that was interesting. Is that because you're skimming the surface in your thinking? Let's remember that this whole Acts 18, don't be afraid is in the context of talking about 
Jesus talking about the gospel, giving the gospel. So in one context, there is, nobody actually specifically said man, but shame was used. And actually, if you are afraid of shame, therefore then it's in shame in front of who? Well, that can only be one place. That can't be anything other than people. Because before God, we don't need to be ashamed because we have his grace to be able to approach the throne with boldness because of his grace, not because of anything we've done, but because of his grace. Proverbs 29, 25 says, fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. I'm going to repeat that again, and I'm going to ask a question. What does that mean then? Okay, let's see if we can unpack that. It's going to be a lot of questions today. As I said, it's like pastoral work on mass. You know, it'd be like sitting in my office on a one-to-one, and I just ask you lots of questions, yeah? But here we go. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. So what does fearing people look like? It can mean like um, you may be persecuted, you may be um, outcasted, people might not shun you because of your faith, because of who you are. And um, it could mean like, uh, it could uh, mean like you would be, um, maybe feel like shame, because I've spoken to people before and they just like sometimes some people will mock it and you know like mock your faith and um, dismiss it or just think you're a bit crazy you know okay thank you anyone else well uh, i'm glad i got joy over there be pointing um with with shame and people i was reading an article yesterday that talked about the the way that the um, social media and the internet have had a huge uh, effect in this. So they told a story of a particular person who um, said something when, about 10 years ago, and suddenly that has now become all over media, and they are shamed all over the world because of something which, which, they, which they did, which they don't any longer hold. They were a teenager when they, when they said this, but it is now become, so the whole thing of, of um, the fear of man, of, of shame, of your identity, if you like, being defined for you by something that's not you. So that, that everyone else, so this person's identity has been shrunk to being one thing which they said 10 years ago, mm. and that they've now become the subject of international ridicule and shame. Thank you. So I'm holding this because this is a biggie. Fear, uh, being afraid of expressing a certain opinion, which um, people may not agree with. So you kind of keep that opinion to yourself rather than saying, actually, hang on, I disagree with you. Okay, thank you. Uh, from, from what I can read here, it says social phobia. Yeah. Oh, hold on, I lost it. <laughs> it's a pathological fear of people or human company. How do you pronounce that word? Anthrop... And you're asking me, of all the people in this church, to be asking. <laughs> Anthrophobia, right. basically, right. it's anthology and Pan phobia together, yeah? Right, it's a pathological fear of people or human company. Yep. Right. That's the biggie, that's when it's... Uh... But what is it, Joe? Um, sorry, Kevin. I think it could also be like a disproportionate or fear around managers and people. Um, you know, you're worried about talking to them because you know they might react a certain way. You anticipate people behaving a certain way that you know isn't really healthy to think that way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
taking a rubber man being a dangerous trap, literally in any context, could be someone just get crippled, not being able to express themselves because of what they think might happen if they do. Yep. Were you worried about people's action or reaction to or how people will perceive something about, yeah, that's going to be um, interpreted as fair? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. But I don't like to put this across that. Um, for, for me personally, I don't fear people. Maybe it's a personality thing. Um, I respect. I don't fear. I fear God. Um, the Bible says we should fear a person that can, we shouldn't fear someone that can kill the flesh. Yeah, we're so, coming to that later. So, yeah, so, Don't take the sermon now. Yes, so, <laughs> I, I, I struggle to fear people I respect. I'm going to stop there. No, that's brilliant. Ola. I get you. Thank you. No, that's fine. Ola's going to take over now, everyone. No, that's fine. It's perfect. Similar to what Jay was saying in a way, um, I remember a situation years and years ago when I was very fearful about something and actually talking with a Christian friend, they were saying it was something, the, the fear almost was like the size of a credit card, but because I was holding it right here in front of my eyes, it was blinding me to what was going on around me and actually it was about getting my perspective right which was this little thing, which was insignificant for, and God could deal with it very easily. It was actually about shifting my perspective back onto him rather than focusing on that, that fear. I was giving the, the power, I was giving power to that fear, you know, I was kind of giving yeah. permission rather than actually saying, no, God is all powerful. Cool. Right, Joy and Ola are now going to preach the rest of the sermon. Someone abusing their authority, uh, trying to manipulate you because you have made some mistake or you are really vulnerable. So that kind of fear that they will abuse their authority and really put me in a very bad position. Okay. So we've talked. <laughs> yep. Last one. Giving power to people who say, oh, because they know something about you. Therefore, they use it to control you. But that's interesting. It's us giving them the power. It's us giving them the power. And in the practical sense, fearing, fearing a person, it's all right, most translations, they say man, but you know, we, we, we do know that there's two genders. But fearing a person or fearing people, what does that do to us as Christians? It, it, we compromise, do not we not, in what we're being asked to do. So if therefore then we are fearing so-and-so's person, we then compromise and fall to a compromise when God might be saying, no, this is what I want you to do. But because we fear a person and don't trust the Lord where we should be finding our ultimate safety, we are compromising. And hence that passage, don't be afraid, speak out. And we'll come to the speak out in two weeks' time. But just that whole passage about that is, don't be afraid, always speak out when the Lord asks you to. By the way, it is when the, the implicit here is when God asks you to. But it's very easy for us to be scared of someone. And I am talking of somebody here, me, who has been on a journey in all of this. So don't be sitting there thinking, I'm saying, well, that's all right for you, Warren, you've got it all sorted no, been on a journey, and it's a continuing journey. But you discover that you compromise when you are afraid of a person. So what did Jesus say? Well, in Luke... He made it very clear to us in the book of Luke that we are going to, Luke chapter 12, 
Uh, you'll notice, by the way, the laptop is back and now fixed and fully, but I didn't load up the Bible verses to me. So, um, that's my fault. But uh, you'll, you'll notice in Luke chapter 12 that uh, uh, Jesus makes it very, very clear to us that No, it was in Matthew chapter 10. That's where it was. It's a parallel in Luke, in Luke 12, but I will go to Matthew 10 because it reads better. <laughs> Matthew chapter 10. Um, it makes it very clear. Students are not greater than their teacher and slaves are not greater than their master. Students are to be like their teacher and slaves are to be like their master. And since I, says Jesus, the master of the household, have been called the prince of demons, the members of my household will be called by even worse names. So coming back to uh, what Debbie was saying about when people think we're a bit weird when we talk about Jesus. Yeah, well, well, if, if Jesus was called the prince of demons, we're going to be called even worse, folks. There's a promise. But then Jesus says, but don't be afraid of those who threaten you. Don't be afraid of those who threaten you. For the time is coming when everything that is covered will be revealed and all that is secret will be made known. We'll come to that some later date. But what I tell you now in darkness, shout abroad when daybreak comes. When I whisper in your ear, shout from the housetops for all to hear. Oh, don't be silent. Speak out. And by the way, when it's from the rooftops, of course, back there in Palestine, rooftops were flat. So don't think you've got to climb up your peaks. Wouldn't be very nice. But the point being, don't be afraid, it then says in verse 28, of those who want to kill your body. Hey, Ola. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body. Then it goes on. What is the price of two sparrows? One cup of coin. But not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. And we quote that verse so often. God knows the very hairs on your head, so why are you worried? But it's in the context of basically persecution, being in trouble for knowing Jesus. But we tend to use that phrase in lots of other little contexts, but that's what it's actually contextualised in. In, don't worry, God knows about every hair on your head. Amen? All right, some of us have more hair than others. That means God doesn't have to count so many. You can go on to the next person who really needs it. So and then it goes on, so don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Don't be afraid of man. Fear God. Now we're going to talk about fearing God in a moment. Because we don't like the idea of fearing God. If you take that word fear in the wrong context. So let me take you back to when you sat there and thought to yourself, uh, felt revealed to you, what is it you fear the most? Now, it may not be, you could be like, Ola doesn't fear man, respects, yes, respect is good, but doesn't fear a person. But there'd be other things, people, planes, spiders, etc., you know, at the end of the day, fear is debilitating. No matter what it is you're fearful of, fear is debilitating. And one of my favourite scenes in Raiders of the Lost Ark, yeah, no, don't panic, bear with me a minute. One of my favourite scenes is where, um, in the third one, where they go down into the catacombs in Rome to look for um, a, a coffin, and they're getting all excited, and the Turns out to be the German traitor woman, but she turns around to Indy and says, oh, your father would have loved this. He said, no, he would never got this far. He's so scared of rats. Now you laugh, but if you're so scared of something that you're never going to enter into something that's really exciting, that means that fear has become debilitating, doesn't it? And you're then going to miss out on what's beyond that because you're fearful of whatever is before you. 
So let's just take that that you were fearful of right now and ask yourself, and you're going to take a minute of silence, okay, why do I fear that? Minute silence now. Okay. Park it to one side for a minute. Fear of the Lord. Hmm? He is the beginning of wisdom. But fear of the Lord. He's God, creator, sustainer, universe. Yes? Now, everything else we've discussed so far, you can physically see. Yes? God, we say, we can't physically see. But it says in Romans, he's seen in all of creation. And Timmy led us there in the, during the worship time. He's seen in you, yes? No? Hello? Yes. To fear God is to show him all the reverence for the fact that he is the almighty, the all-powerful, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. There is nothing outside of him that is more powerful. Nothing. Fearing him is recognising the holiness of our God, the otherness of our God, that defeats anything else you've just mentioned. Even being fearful of Satan is wrong. Because he was created by God. Hello? So he's defeated by God. Hello? Yet we seem to have land runners, a chunk of us in this room, that are fearful of him, that he might appear in your bedroom late at night. You're laughing, but I think some of you aren't, because that's what's there for you. But God is more powerful than him. So if God is more powerful than Satan, who is this, by the way, he's just a fallen angel, so he's no more powerful than the other angels. He's just a fallen angel. So why are we then scared of a person who's a little lower than the angels? Yes? So to be fearful of the Lord, to fear him and be with him only is to say, whoa, where should my focus be? When I'm scared, and to use, I didn't realise Joy was going to talk about the credit card thing. This is not your credit card bill, all right? This is like having a, something can be for you. If you're fearful of something, it normally is because you've got that as your focus. But who we should always have our focus and our eyes on is? And that's where our fear should lie. Not in, it's always hard to describe this sometimes in the best time for us, but not in the sense of, I've got a quake in my boots every time I even think of God. It's not that. It's a holy reverence to the fact, whoa. I re to use honest, I respect God for who he is. But I know I can still approach his throne boldly. It's like you would go up to anybody that's your manager, let's say, for instance. You would go in there, knowing if they say, I have an open door policy. Yeah, how many of our managers really actually mean the open door policy? But, you know, I have an open door policy, so you know you're welcome to go into your manager's office whenever you want to, yeah? Sort of knock on the door. Can I just have a quick couple of words with you? Yeah? So I'm having a memory of me trying to, when I try to resign from my company to come into ministry. Is it important? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but I'm really busy. I've got lots on. Yeah, it's okay, that's fine. But is it urgent? No, no, I can come back another time. Yeah, but is it really, this is him, not me. Is it really, yeah. How about if I just tell you what it is? And they go, all right, and said, I'm resigning. Oh yeah, come in, close the door. <laughs> It was so funny. Um, but the point being, 
you know you can go into your manager's office, but you would still respect, wouldn't you? Yeah? Well, take that with God that says, open door policy, people, through my son, Jesus Christ, come on in, come in boldly, ask whatever you want within my will, but you would still fear and respect him, wouldn't you? Yeah? You wouldn't just come in and go, yo, Lord, all right? Cheers, cup of coffee, yeah, yeah. Actually, I'll have milk, two sugars. Thanks, God, thanks very much. Yeah? You wouldn't do that to your manager, you wouldn't do that to God. Now, he's trying to get it onto a level that we can understand. When you, we wake up in the morning, it should be, first thought, the Lord. Not, oh man, what a day I've got ahead of me. God's in control of that, yes? So why are we afraid? He's there through all the times and troubles. Isaiah 40, he talks about, I will hold your hands through the waters, yes? Yeah, it doesn't mean that the waters are not going to cause us grief, but the Lord has got us by his strong right arm, yes? So when it says, don't be afraid, and it's a command from God, there's a reason, because he is God. And he's saying, I am with you. And we're all going to go, amen, and then go, yeah, but I've got this fear. And as I said, I'm on the journey. I am not. You are not. This is not Pastor Warren preaching it like it's all fully sorted in his own head, but he's getting there. Don't be afraid. Now, to use Pastor David's uh, story that on the article he read yesterday, we've all done stuff back in our past that now we seriously regret. Yeah? Yes. And we might have changed our position on some opinions we once had. Or we've done something way back there that we regret. And that can sit before us, that's going to catch up with me one day. That's going to come and bite me right in front of my face. Not my backside, that's going to come right in here. And that might well be true. But what's the use of walking around being afraid it's going to happen? Because guess what? It may never happen. But you're so fearful of it, it's debilitating your walk with God and you being able to be God's fullest that he's made you to be in the first place. And even if it does come and bite you, what's God's promise? I am with you. I will see you through it. It may not be the best journey in the world and you might wish after a while, please get me off of this roller coaster. But God will walk you through it. Amen? Amen. He walks us all through it. I want to make no light of being scared of things like spiders. Because even though that can be debilitating. But it's a fear that we shouldn't have. I... Yeah, I had a fear of crabs. I don't know if I've told this story or not, but hey. Big fear of crabs. I know you might say, well, it's a bit silly thing, but bear with us. The reason I got a fear of crabs is when I was a kid, I was running along the beach, and I was ro running along to my nan. And my nan uh, uh, picked up a crab that was on the beach, and as I'm running towards her, she just went, look at that! All she was doing was showing me the crab. Okay, but all I saw was these legs going, <laughs> yeah, wonder why I'm scared of certain sci-fi alien movies, I'll tell you. And I've got to say, <laughs> it, whoa, I remember running back the other way, and that was it. Now, that was a vague memory I've got, and it is so vague, it's taken years to come, years ago, it came to the surface, I couldn't remember. I think I was chatting to Joy, and she wanted to know why I was scared of crabs, and it all came to memory. And it's something that's happened way, way back then. I didn't realise it influenced me later in life. That's why I don't like spiders myself. I'm not a massive fan of them, Joyce. I'm with you on them. I do my editing, but you know, I don't mind. I've had to get over them. But anything with eight legs. Ooh. Me and God are going to have a chat about why. <laughs> with fear and reverence, obviously. So a few years ago, we were on a family holiday, and we were in uh, down south, and it was in a in a in a, a, a one of these. Um, uh, fairground things and not fairground but um, oh, it was a sea line what was it it was a place that was looking off the sea, um, sea, sea life sanctuary that's it 
But so they did this thing for kids come and you know, touch and feel various things, and crabs being one of them. So daughter wants to go and pick up a crab. Good, Joy, yours, mine, I'm standing back over here. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I laugh about it now, but genuinely I was like, it's fine. And then I felt God go to me, you have got to get over this fear. I'm like, then I'm on holiday, Lord, it's okay. I don't deal with things with you when I'm on holiday, I'm chilling. It's all right, Lord, no worries. Yeah, we, we don't worry about our inner being when we're on holiday, we chill out. Oh, you're all laughing, is that all the same, yeah? Yeah, yeah. thank you. But anyway, God said, you've got to go and sort this out. Okay, it was really strong. So I said to Joy, I've got to, didn't I? I said, God's telling me I've got to do this now. I've got to sort out this fear of crabs. It's got nothing to do with the fact I'm going to be spending the rest of my life with crabs. But it's to do with getting over fear. Learning to trust God and fear him and him only. So, long story short, all kids had fun and parted. Okay, I'm now going to go up to the young uh, lady. Um, so here is a man in his 40s going up to a young lady who's clearly very confident with the sea life, going to, um, I wonder if you could help me overcome my fear of crabs, please. <sighs> Do you know something? You want to talk about shame? That was shame. So she, I said, look, I've got this massive fear of crabs. By the time, everybody's parted by this point. So I'm like, oh, that's right. Um, and I really know, I believe God's called me to, and I actually said this, I believe God's called me, I've got to overcome this, so I must come overcome this fear. And she goes, really? I said, yeah. And like, there was this crab. And he was only a small thing, bless him. But he was a crab. And uh, so she said, well, look, this is how you pick them up. And she guided me to how you pick up a crab from behind so that the <laughs> can't get you. And that's part of it for me with God. When we actually go, Lord, how do I do this? God will guide us how to do it and how to do it in the right path. So we haven't got to fear anything else because God's guiding us, yes? So like this young lady, uh, she was guiding me and I thought, okay, I can do this. The next minute I know, somebody's overheard, an adult overheard my conversation with her and then all of a sudden there's a bit, a few more extra people coming round to watch. <laughs> Great crowd of witnesses I did not need. Anyway, picked up the crab. You're quite cute, really, aren't you? What if I could cook you? No, I didn't, I was joking. <laughs> okay, yep, yeah, all right, great, thank you. And actually, it was all right. And it really overcame that fear. Uh, was an angel, funny enough, to give a little bit of testimony to the people around. And then uh, put the crab back, thank the young lady very much. Really, I was quite emotional, as you can imagine, genuinely. And that was it. So point being, something way back over here in your past can be tying you back and you don't even know it. And God is saying, now is the time to overcome that fear. Now is the time to dispel that and fear the Lord only and give it to him. Amen? Amen. So, crabs is funny in one aspect, but we've all got bigger, th or what we perceive to be, bigger things before us. And God is saying, fear me. Don't fear that. Don't be afraid, thus says the Lord. Take a moment. Think about the things that you know we, you, we, when we spent those minutes of silence that God's revealed to you or you know yourself that you are afraid of. Can I really suggest to you that you don't bring up the little thing that's safer for you to look at? Do you see what I mean? When God is pointing out something much bigger, or it's bigger in your mind, it's not in God's, it's exactly the same size. Minuscule, with his strength. Bring that now before him. I'm going to ask the musicians and the singers to stand up and we're going to spend some time responding. So just take some silence. Don't worry about what the singers and musicians are doing.
We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.